Unable to work because of health issues, Stephanie Bottrell, her mother and grandmother, made it clear to her loved ones that she had been struggling to survive for some years. But the introduction of the government's so-called bedroom tax last month seemed to have been the last straw. Ten days ago, Stephanie walked straight into the path of a lorry and was killed instantly. According to her son Stephen, the tragic 53-year-old killed herself to avoid plunging into further pos poverty. Stephen is now campaigning to get the government to scrap the tax to stop anyone else being driven to suicide and he joins us now and Stephen thank you very much for being here I know that this is this is a tough one for you it's yeah. incredibly raw at the moment but you're very brave to be here talking okay. about this um, just a bit of backstory about your life your your mum raised you and your sister Laura and this was in the this, this same house this was in yeah. the three bed terrace in Solihull and you lived there for 18 years she yeah. lived there for 18 years um, what sort of mum was she what was what was she like well, she was just always loving, you know, she didn't have a lot of money to give us, anything like that, but she'd just give us as much as what she could all the time, you know. She was always there for us, trying to help out as much. And you, about five years ago, you moved out, didn't you, because you had your own child. Yeah. And um, your sister, who's 23, she moved out about two months ago. Yeah. And your mum struggled with that quite a bit, yeah. sort of suddenly having a house filled with children to yeah. suddenly being on her own. Yeah, I think it was a bit of a shock to her, you know, like, kids, kids have moved out and, you know, like, she got a bit lonely and stuff like that. But I think after a while, she thought about it and, you know, my kids are going to grow up, they're going to move out. You know, I think she got past all of that, you know. What she loved, because um, uh, your little boy's called Charlie Bow, isn't he? So yeah. she, she doted on him. Yeah. Um, and phoned you quite regularly. You, yeah. were in, you were in contact a lot. Yeah, How much? All the time. She'd phone me about three times a day, you know, texting constantly, you know, asking how Charlie Bow was and, you know, just asking what I'm doing and stuff like that. Like. And so then on the 1st of April, this so-called bedroom tax um, is introduced, the removal of, uh, of state room subsidy. Um, so she had, uh, as you say, very little money anyway. Yeah. Um, she had two spare bedrooms, because the room that you were in, yeah. you moved out, and then the room sister in, yeah. and she moves out. So essentially she lost £80 a month. Yeah. Now, we said before uh, in the introduction that she couldn't work because um, she... Uh, she was unable to, she was disabled, yeah, yeah. but she never claimed any disability no, benefits. No. Why didn't she ever claim anything for that? I think she used to go, say, like, go to her to get help or something like that, and they wouldn't refer her or some, you know what I mean? And I think it was a bit of a struggle because she was on her own, you know, like, I don't think it just offered enough support for her, and she had an illness that made her weak. Because she had myasthenia gravis, didn't yeah. she? What is that? It's, uh, it's like, um, a muscle disease where the, the signals in your brain doesn't tell your muscles what to do properly, so she had to take medication. But obviously the medication doesn't last all, all day mm. or whatever, you know. So she's un she was unable to work because she'd be too weak, you mm. know what I mean? And so she's, uh, she's not claiming those benefits. No. She loses £80 a month because of, of this new tax. Uh, although it's not a tax, it's a reduction of, of, uh, of, yeah. of allowances, of benefits. Um, what was the effect on her way of life at that time? How did she react to you guys? Well, when she heard about it coming in, this new law, she kept... I remember she kept phoning me and telling me, you know, how am I going to do this? How am I going to get this extra money for these rooms? You know, I haven't got the money. Where am I going to get it from? And, like, I, I said... Uh, it, the winter before, you know, like the winter that's just gone, she couldn't even afford to put heating on. It was so that the, bad. It was the simple things like the heating and yeah. even eating. You'd go yeah. around and look in the cupboards and yeah. she, she didn't really have... proper food. She wasn't there. eating properly. No. And she was up for being relocated. I yeah. mean, obviously it was going to be a big shift for her because she'd brought her children up in this house. Like we said, she'd yeah. been there for 18 years. Yeah. But she was... She did say, I will relocate. So yeah. how come that didn't happen? I think they just never found her somewhere suitable to live, like, because she'd started packing, knowing that, you know, I've got to move. I, you know, like, I've got a big house. It's, it's too big for me, obviously. I can't afford to have the heating on. And so she was ready. She wasn't ready at that moment, you know, but she'd started packing, mm. thinking, you know, I've got to move. Willing well, she'd seen a couple of places that weren't right. There was yeah. somewhere that, uh, that was in a neighbourhood that she 
didn't particularly want yeah. to go and live in. There was somewhere that was 18 minutes walk away yeah. from a bus stop, and yeah. obviously we've already discussed those issues yeah. with you. So the places that she'd seen for her, she felt were were inappropriate. Yeah. Um, so when was the last time you you spoke to? Her? Was there any feeling that this the depression that that this was a part of yeah. and the loneliness that she was feeling was there any idea for you that it had got that bad no never I'd never thought it'd get this bad you know that she'd take her life I mean I was with her on the Friday the day before it happened and I don't know if she was just like trying to just act strong as if like you know as if she wasn't upset, you know. Mm. I know she was upset, but I didn't think it was this bad, you know what I mean? Well, you could never predict no. that something like this was about to happen. No. And the first you knew of it was that morning. The yeah. incident had happened at around about 6.30 a.m. Yeah. And the police knocked on your door around about 9? Yeah, nine about 9.30. So I imagine you were in complete yeah. shock. I just couldn't believe it, right? Well, she had... Um, she'd written notes for everyone. Yeah. Um, she'd uh, got herself ready, she'd walked out the house, she dropped her keys through the neighbour's door. The neighbor's door and then she walked up to the M6 and, and stepped out in, in front yeah. of the traffic. Um, the note that she left you, uh, now the, uh, a lot has been made about the fact that, that she, you know, she blames the government on this, this new yeah. change in, uh, in, in finance for, for people who have those extra bedrooms. Um, she doesn't specifically say that in her note, does yeah. she? She just actually says she blames the, the government. She says to my darling son, Stephen, are you all right with me yeah. reading this out, by the way? Um, this is not about you, this is about me. I can't cope anymore. I'm not a strong person. I'm weak. Uh, don't blame yourself for me ending my life. It's my life. The only people to blame are the government, no one else. Uh, she goes on to say, later, I always love you with all my heart and soul. Don't cry for me. Be happy. It's where I want to be. I just can't cope with my life. It's just too hard. Um, and, uh, and, she, and there are two or three times within, within this letter that she, that she does blame the government for, yeah. uh, for, for the reason for her killing herself. Um, she says, um, I don't, uh, don't, I don't blame anyone for my death except the government. This is their fault, not yours. Um, and you're convinced that this, that was yeah. the reason? The, she, we never had any problems up until this had come in. Mm. You know, she didn't have a lot, but she was proud of everything that she had. And, you know, like, all these years that I've, you know, like, I've been here and we've been in this house for so long and had this life and, you know, and then the, all of a sudden this law comes in and then, you know what I mean? So what would you like to see change? Because you understand that there are families that yeah. are out there that, yeah. you know, there's three, four people in a bedroom that they need yeah. these bigger homes. And you understand yourself, yeah. you said, you know, mum couldn't afford to heat it, yeah. so she was willing to go to yeah. a smaller property. Yeah. What would you like to see change? I just think they need to rethink it and give... They're just picking on the vulnerable, like people like my mum, and they just need to offer more help and rethink the law a little bit and just change it, just to help people like my mum. So it's not the fact that she would have had to have moved, yeah. it's the way in which yeah. that was managed. Yeah. They didn't um, go about it the right way. Uh, spokesman for Solihull Council and Community Housing said, we were very shocked and saddened to hear the news about Mrs Bottrell. Staff from Solihull Council and the Community Housing had provided a range of support to her around issues of welfare reform and housing in recent weeks, including supporting her over her desire to move home. We'd like to express our sincere condolences to her family and friends at this difficult time. And the Department of Work and Pension said that it would be inappropriate to comment on this case, but made the following point. It's only right that we bring fairness back to the system, when in England alone there are nearly two million households on the social housing waiting list and over a quarter of a million tenants are living in overcrowded homes. And that's the point that Holly mm. makes there, that yeah. there has to be this redistribution yeah. But your point is that that in here there seemed to be uh, something missing in the yeah, process. It's just not there's not like a middleman, you know what I mean, to go out to people like my mum and see what a situation is. I mean, you know, like I think they offered her money to move, but then they started picking things that were wrong with the house and saying, well, we're going to charge her for this, and then it was giving them even more pressure. You know, how am I going to come up with the money to fix things wrong with the house? Mm -hmm. So.
Well, it'll be interesting to see um, what what happens, and uh, and also be very interested to to hear from you as well if you're experiencing uh, something along those lines. Uh, yeah. uh, if you've got a story to tell us, then then let us know. At the moment, Stephen, thank, thank you very you much very indeed. Much. Thank you.